not feeling the best today, but welcome to day five of the Alaska cruise. We are currently in Glacier Bay, Alaska. And if you've been following along with my journey on this cruise, welcome back. Thanks for being here. If you are new, my name is Anna and I create solo travel vlogs often in Europe, but this time we are in Alaska and we are currently looking at a active glacier, which is crazy. So hit that subscribe button below, hit the like of this video, and let's keep exploring this beautiful glacier in Glacier Bay, Alaska. Welcome to Glacier Bay, Alaska. We are headed into Glacier Bay National Park, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site of 3.3 million acres of protected land, 30% of which is made of more than 1,000 glaciers. It isn't accessible by roadways, and the benefit of cruising with Holland America is they kind of have VIP status. They have been sailing to Alaska longer than any other cruise line, and because in Glacier Bay only two ships are allowed during the high season, Holland America always gets priority to enter the national park. Inside Glacier Bay National Park, out of the 1,000 glaciers, seven are considered active tidewater glaciers. You know, the type that break off icebergs into the sea. And we can see the ice chunks floating in the freezing water. It's a place for wildlife to live and, of course, very interesting to observe as a tourist. If you're not from part of the world where glaciers exist, a glacier is a large, slow-moving mass of ice. It's compacted ice, not water, and it's found in cold regions like Arctic and Antarctica, as well as some high mountain areas like Alaska. This stunning glacier is called the John Hopkins Glacier and it's found at the end of the John Hopkins Inlet and is the farthest northwest in the Glacier Bay. It's about a one mile wide and it's considered to be 12 miles long starting in the mountain peaks as well. Where the glacier ends, it's called the John Hopkins Inlet and it's just a breathtaking spectacular. It is a little bit darker because the way that the rocks contribute to scraping off the mountainside and scraping into the glacier creates this kind of dark measure and you know I'm not a geologist so you got to do your own research but nonetheless it's pretty cool to see how nature is just caving into itself and creating its own lines again when the the icebergs break off this is a place where a lot of animals like harbor seals and birds can rest <laughs> see any part of blue within the glacier that isn't coloring that is the way the light is falling through the bubbles of the ice and the light spectrum reflects back on us I'm sure there's a much deeper scientific explanation but that's my Coles Notes version Book 10 this is science The name for the John Hopkins Glacier comes from Harry Fieldling Reed. He was a glaciologist, a seismologist, and a professor at John Hopkins University, and he named the glacier in 1893. Goodbye, glacier. The cool thing is too, in the room here, they have a bow camera on the actual AV, but we're gonna run upstairs and try and catch on starboard side the glacier that I missed. Let's turn the TV off. You have to grab your key card too, always. I already locked myself out once because it just sits in to get light, so let's go. Normally I take the stairs, but I'm not feeling 100% and we gotta go and my camera's dead, no! little boat going by is a tiny motorboat and that gives us size comparison of how tall we are how big this boat is and how ginormous this glacier also is 
any waterfalls we see aren't actually active waterfalls they're just the snow and the ice melting so you can clearly see where a few old waterfalls were but right now it looks like there's only one tiny tiny active stream but honestly it could be frozen ice it's chilly out here When I'm serious to get a coffee, just came back down to my room, was lying on my bed for a moment resting, and I looked outside and I see a glacier. Like a huge glacier. It's just the craziest thing to be sitting like in your bed, comfortable, almost in like whatever you define this as home, and look outside to see a glacier. Let's go find my toque and clean up my room. Oh, my toque's in my pocket. Wow, 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 folks. This is crazy. It's huge. This next glacier is named after the French geographer who visited in 1913. The geographer's name was Emmanuel de Marjorie and it's named the Marjorie Glacier. It's longer than the first one, the John Hopkins Glacier. This one's about 21 miles long, starting in the mountain peaks and ends in the ocean water. And I just thought that was fascinating. The way that the blue glistened and the way the light hits the glacier, I just thought it was absolutely incredible. And to know that it's going deep, deep into the water and up into the mountain range, it was just incredible. Behind me there is a glacier. Insane. I'm just on my deck. Crazy. You can also see that the glacier is here predominantly, but it does go all the way back up into the mountainside there. It's a bit difficult to see on camera, but I'll zoom in. Wow. The iceberg does uh, break off some parts and the icebergs become resting spots for harbor seals, sea otters, black-legged kidawak gulls, and other birds. We didn't really see a ton of wildlife when we were passing by, but nonetheless, to see all these ice chunks break off, it's a response to the environment and things like global warming. To also give you context for size, I'm currently standing on the fifth floor of the boat. <laughs> We have almost a direct shot right over there, but it doesn't really do it justice for size. I'm not sure if it's going on. I know I've said this like a hundred times, but I'm just sitting here with a blanket and a coffee and a glacier behind me. You can even see it in my glasses.
friends, it's the end of day five and after so many glacier sightings today, which was beautiful and stunning and I'm so lucky that I had my own veranda to watch it all from. So I highly recommend indulging yourself in having a veranda room instead of an inside room where you don't get any kind of balcony. The gang headed off to trivia, which has become our new favorite activity and we lost again. It was lightning trivia, so it was 30 questions really quickly and I contributed nothing to it. I've come together, I'm not very good at trivia, but I definitely enjoy being the one who at least writes all the answers down. And then some people enjoyed some happy hour. We got ready for dinner, which tonight was dressy. So I wore a little, I call it my salsa dress. I wore it to my cousin's wedding last year and borrowed my friend's shoes. So that was really fun. <laughs> but after dinner, when we were enjoying music, I decided I needed to change. So I went to my sexy professor mode, let's call it, for a button down shirt and put my glasses on. And we enjoyed a comedy show with a comedian. Their first name's Azeem. I'll put their username or their um, Instagram down here because they were really good. Definitely like a roasting kind of comedic show, which I think is great because you're playing off of like the cruises, the food and what's happening. So it's something that we can all better understand since the crowd is probably more like a 50, 60, 70 year old crowd. Some of the jokes were like older, but I still understood them all. And I liked how they kind of played off of some people being slow and not getting some of the younger jokes. So it is currently 10 o'clock, 10 15. And it's still light outside. As you can see behind me, we are going more Northern in Alaska, more across or perpendicular, no parallel, parallel to the Yukon. And so tomorrow we'll be in Ketchikan and that ends day five of this vlog. If you are enjoying watching my Alaska tour series on the cruise, then subscribe and hit the like button below. Leave a comment what you're enjoying watching so far. And we'll see you for tomorrow on day six of this amazing cruise. Catch you later.